All right, Shola Wong. This is Howard Wan by Nyasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Before I begin, I want to say Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Ha Kodash, Ma Mouth. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is a message from um, the Tampa mayor. I think she put this message out yesterday as a warning to any, any uh, uh, residents that don't want to leave or evacuate or that haven't evacuated yet. All right. I think the storm is expected to hit tonight, uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night. Now, this is a double-sided coin. This is a double-sided coin because on one side you have the warning and yeah, you sh if you're going to evacuate, you can evacuate. That don't make you lack faith or, you know, just because you leave, you, you know, you can't go off of that. If somebody decided to leave, uh, kudos to them. You know, they can have faith that the Lord give them a safe trip. You get what I'm saying? So different ways to show faith. Getting out of the way of danger is always smart. But you got some brothers that decided to stay. Even like us in Jacksonville, which we're a little north for the storm. It's going to come across us, but uh, we decided to stay as well. So that's another way of showing faith. You get what I'm saying? So it's two ways. Now, the other side of the coin, well, that's one side of the coin with her giving warnings. And, you know, it's up to you to take heed to that. You know, just somebody saying, hey, they, what she said here is drastic. But um, in her position, which that's a whole nother conversation, she, um, it's smarter for her to say it in this way to protect liability, you know. It's better to tell people to just leave instead of saying, hey, just stay and, you know, have faith because you don't have faith anyway. So these Christians, you know, they they, they lose faith when he's when tr in troublesome times, man. A lot of them lose faith, man, unless it's like financial trouble. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm going to read this quote from her and it's going all over the internet and the other side of the coin is this this is my thing she has no say so say so and no surety of who lives and who dies I don't care what it is it can be a house fire somebody can still live through it they might be tor uh, in torment when they come out or come out unscathed you know so that's where the lack of understanding the lack of faith and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai comes into play that's the other side of the coin that putting this statement out spiritually she has no say so who's going to die or live I don't care what it is if you stay around for this for this um it, it's this storm you're gonna it's like for sure you know the scriptures say uh it's up to the most high now i'm gonna read this real quick and we'll move forward so it kind of hit me uh two different ways i was like all right yeah she you know they write for evacuating but it also caused a lot of turmoil but they talking about 15 foot waves now you know if you're on the beach it's like come on now Um, but it says Tampa mayor issues a warning to residents ignoring evacuation orders. You are going to die. Damn. I ain't said it. She said it. So, Whew. so that's a bold statement. Not, not thinking about people that may have boats. She's not thinking about people that couldn't leave. You think they want to hear this? Well, some people just couldn't leave. They might not have the means to leave. And they sticking around, hunkered down in faith. And then you're like, yeah, you're going to die. <laughs> it's like, yo, what the, come on. So, she should have... I think it would have been a better way of saying it. 
just you know, she, you know, but yeah, yeah, uh, it's a smarter choice to leave, you know, something like that. But it's, it's way she could have put this statement instead of saying uh, people gonna be unalived. All right, so let, I'm gonna get a couple of precepts. It says Tampa mayor has issues a warning to residents in Tampa. Now the storm, I'm gonna show you something. Excuse me. I was watching the storm yesterday, last night, and um, it got this spin. It's probably not there, and I think it moved to the right. But this, this right here was um on the map as well, and they weren't even talking about it. I don't know if this is that wind shear that they were talking about or the convection, but this right here was it popped up out of nowhere. Popped up out of nowhere. All right, and it started pulling. See, what I noticed is I showed my family is uh, this, whatever this is, started pulling all the storm out of the damn hurricane to the right and started wrapping it this way. And that's when it shifted. It shifted south. All right, it shifted south about 75 miles. So now... It's not coming directly at Tampa. It's going a little bit below Tampa to like Sarasota, I think. And it's going to spin water out of Tampa instead of into Tampa. All right. Remember, you got brothers down there. And I think a lot of them decided to stay as well. So just like people, uh, Akim, that are over in the Big Bend of uh, this area right here of Florida, or the Panhandle, they call it the Big Bend, you know, the Bend area where Helene hit. This is where um, a lot of Akim are at. I didn't even know that. There's so many brothers around, close. We're up here in North Florida in Jacksonville, all right? Been out here since like 2008, <laughs> you know, um, teaching in Florida. So now that's something I noticed last night. And right before I saw this, Look at the storm, right? These are the winds. That's how big the wind field is. So it's, this wind is going to be felt from Miami all the way up to Georgia and North Carolina. All right? So now because of wind shear, I'm not going to get on into that. Maybe another lesson or something else. But because of wind shear, it's coming down. It's supposed to clip the top of these storms and make them a little bit weaker. So don't don't fall for Esau crying on TV and shit. They had that new the meteorologist crying and shit. I was telling one brother, I was like, man, that dude probably went through something that day and he had to be, he probably was tired of reporting on it. And started crying. Who knows, man? But he up there crying, talking about some uh, it reached below uh uh What's you call that, man? The pressure, that right, low pressure, uh, one thousand, and it went below one thousand, close close to nine hundred. So that's like whoa. All right, that means more intense storm, more physicality to the storm, circulation, and pressure, intensity. So now with the wind shear, that clips the storm and makes it weaker. So that's why you're going to see the storm turn into a three, but with, with the, the power or potential of a four. All right. But it's expected to pull water out of Tampa instead of pouring water into Tampa. But, you know, still going to be power outages and things like that. All right. So. All right. So this is what a lot of people are going to wor worry about as well. All the lightning. Look at that lightning. These are all lightning strikes in the center. Look at that. That joint was thick. Became the strongest storm ever recorded. And I saw, uh, I think it's on my other phone, but I was watching uh, my radar. And uh, on the radar, there was like a beam or something that shot through the damn cloud, through the, through the storm. Last night. Like a big ass beam or something shot through it. 
That's a whole nother topic as well, going into cloud seeding. Where they can shoot a laser to create crystals or crystallization in the cloud. You know, and from those crystals, it could create water droplets. And that's what's called cloud seeding, which produces more rain. So, um, yeah, you would tell people to get, I would tell somebody to get out of the way of a bus that's coming. You know, so I get what she's saying, but there's no guarantee that person is going to be unalived. All right. Yeah, I tried to find the picture. I can't find it uh, from that what I saw last night. But y'all, you know, it's like a cut went through the drone. It was like a something, a beam or something, man. But I can't find that video picture. I thought I screenshotted it. Maybe I didn't. But anyway, this is the word faith, all right. And this is really for people that decided to stay, and some people that even on the road that's traveling out there. You know, you got to have faith in every circumstance, anyway. All right. Um, but two thirds they lack faith because of lack of understanding, and these heathens they just lack faith in general. Or if they have faith, it's for the for the wrong to the wrong uh, God, you know, to a false God. The word faith comes from um, you know, Proto Indo European whatever. Which means what? The word faith means trust. That's what I want to focus on. Trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Confidence. Persuasion. All right? Faith. It means trust. Trust in the Lord, man. And, and, and by her saying with her statement, that takes all trust away. If you stay, you're going to be uh, unalived. She should have said, unless God is with you. She ain't here to say that. A person like that with that type of mindset, man. But anyway, so she, she clearly lacks faith. All right. She, um, when these miseries uh, come upon this earth, we know the calamities are for the wicked, but uh, the elect may be in the midst of those afflictions and turmoils and calamities, but it's really for the wicked. Even the flood was for the wicked, all right? Um, so now, I want to read this, okay? It says, Psalms 32 and 10, many sorrows, many sorrows Yep. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in Yahweh, mercy shall compass him about. See, that's what we're looking for, mercy from the Lord, because everything is a judgment from Yahweh by Shemel Bashai. Who's bringing these storms? Who brought, who brought the storms during the times of Jonah? Who brought the storm during the time of Yahweh Shai? Who brought the flood? All right. It's who dispersed the storm? Let me get that real quick. All right. This is during the time of Jonah when he was sent to teach to the people of Nineveh. But he didn't want to go teach them in Nineveh because he, he, he saw them, Jonah saw them as wicked and that they were disrespectful to Yahweh. And that he, he Jonah believed that Yahweh was so merciful that he would forgive them kind of like uh the mindset that peter was in you know peter had to be taught about the uh the gentiles all right so that's why yahweh rebuked jonah and, and sent the tempest upon him when he tried to flee and run okay uh run away from his uh his duty just like the lord will send destruction on akim that decide to go back into the world that become enemies to the Lord but now in times like this they want to call out and pray to him I can imagine what the fuck you thinking right now if you walked away from this truth walked away from, walking away from a camp I get it but if you walk away from the truth 
and you stop teaching and you know the consequences of it and then years go by months go by and then all of a sudden there's something like this occurs and your ass sitting amongst people and you like yeah you know you how you ever heard of your how you ever heard of <laughs> yeah goodness man so it says this is Jonah 1 and 4 alright so I'm not going to get into the whole story I want to get to the point of who sent out the great tempest the whirlwinds the hurricanes Jonah 1 and 4 but Yahweh sent out a great wind into the sea alright Yahweh sent out the great wind and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so what happened with a hurricane is the wind start to stir up right different directions that's how the proof of air right that goes into a lot proof of the sun as well because the air wouldn't circulate without the effect of the sun from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai but from the sun the actual sun S-U-N that's what controls the movement of the air the hot and cold temperatures on the earth which was started in the beginning but um, the air gets stirred up in a way and the most high sends that wind and it, it starts to gather up storms in it as I showed you in the picture earlier pulling it pulling the storms in to that air circulation and that's when you got a full hurricane all right so who creates that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai all right now who's tries who tries to manipulate that Esau that's where you get cloud seeding all right they don't create the storm but they uh, act what you call it, just like a false flag. False flag can be created by them, or they can use the actual real disaster and turn that into a false flag. Just like a storm, a hurricane, they can uh, manipulate the storm that's already there by doing something called cloud seeding. Even causing the storm to turn back around and hit a place twice. All right, that's the powers of cloud seeding. You know, so that's a whole other topic with Esau thinking that they're God. But Jonah one and four. But Yahweh sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like it like to be broken. All right, so we know the story of Jonah, but now I want to show who who sent out that tempest. Yahweh did. Yahweh sent out a great wind into the sea. All right. All right, so I'm not going to get into this story either. Uh, Matthew 8 and 26, when Yahweh Shai was on the ship and uh, a tempest arose. So we know who sent that tempest. We know who was trying Yahweh Shai at that time and trying to believe us. It was Yahweh uh, building up their faith, all right, and showing that uh, the power that was given to Yahweh Shai. By him doing miracles in front of the disciples and his followers, our, you know, our people. So the Most High sent that tempest during the time of Yahweh Shai. All right. Matthew 8 and 26. And he saith unto them, Why are ye faithful, O ye of little faith? See that? He said, You're going to die. We're going to die. Oh no. That? That's little. That, they have no faith. Right, if, you're going, if, if you're going to be unalived, it's better to be unalived than faith. All right, and trust in the Lord. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. See that? And the sea, and there was a great calm. Great calm. Dissipated, dissipated the storm, just like a wind shear does. It cuts off the storm calms the storm but the man but the men marveled saying what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him that's right and how about this Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the father so he's even more powerful now you think he can't deliver the Akim from this type of storm ain't nothing wrong with you getting your family out the way and the mental anxiety that may come with it but it's going to be even worse out here in the world. You know, 
again, you can have faith to stay or you can have faith to travel. Either way, you should be moving in faith. You know what I'm saying? Uh, faith to evacuate. But it shouldn't be because of the minds that you're going to die. You know, you know, she doesn't know that. All right. Um, let me get some real quick. This is Sirach 40, verse 1. Great travail is created for every man. All right. So there's nothing but travail on this earth. We are born through the womb and we go back into the earth, meaning our body. And the spirit goes back to the father. All right, because that's who we truly are, the spirit that's in these vessels. Kind of like a vessel that's moving through the sea of earth in travail and in afflictions, just like a ship that's out in the, in the ocean. Our spirit is in these vessels in the midst of, of turmoil in this world. Great travail is created for every man and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam, man. Anybody that's born from the ground, except for the ones that's born from the second Adam, Yahweh Shai from heaven. Not gonna be any travail or any turmoil, or heavy yokes. This is a heavy yoke to know that someday, or every day that goes by, uh, could be our last day on this earth or with our fam family, friends, and loved ones, as we call it. But it's better to be in the presence of Yahweh to die is gain. That's what Paul said. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb, so it's a heavy yoke, to the day that they return to the mother of all things, talking about to the ground. All right, and that's why um, I teach my children about the spirit, you know, and transitioning eternity all right their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts man and even in those situations those thoughts can get to you or you can just choose to have faith see that and things will happen how they happen either way just like fighting a fight in a boxing ring you can fight in fear and the thoughts will beat you up with the person that, that's kicking your ass. So you getting your ass kicked twice by your own thoughts and the person that's punching you in the face. Hopefully it'll be blocking. But, um, or you can have a thought of faith and confidence and remember your training and see your target. You feel me? Because even Mike Tyson said it, man, the thought of getting hit in the face can not can cause somebody to faint and pass out in the ring. Just the thought of it, you know, can cause is a men's heart failing them for fear of seeing the things that's coming on the earth, and cause fear of heart. See that from him that sitteth on a throne of glory, unto him that is humble in earth and ashes. So. The richest person on the earth or the most exalted person on the earth, even down to the lowest, a homeless person or a poor, impoverished person or a humblest person on the earth. They, we all go through the same thing. That's what makes us human. From him that wear, wear purple and a crown unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Right. And that's us we you know somebody has just basic linen clothing compared to the mayors and rulers of these towns the bourgeois so all of us go through the same thing mentally have that thought lingering in our head but we're comforted through the truth and through the truth we have trust which is what faith wrath and envy trouble and unquietness fear of death anger all right strife and in the time of rest upon his uh rest upon his bed his night sleep 
do change his knowledge, man. It throw you off. You have all this faith, but then as soon as you're sleeping, you start having thoughts. You wake up in a cold sweat or some shit. Or, you know, you can trick yourself out of your own uh, chance or freedom, you know? Um, it says, when all is safe, he awaketh. See that? And marvelous that the fear was nothing. All right. So sometimes it's better just take your damn nap. Like, how would y'all show this? What did he do on the boat? He went to sleep. <laughs> That's it. Trust the Lord, man. I told my children this time, I said, yo, I'm not staying up all night watching this damn weather. If it get too late, I'm going to sleep. You know, we was out in the woods. Yeah, you got your own watch. You got to watch for danger. But shit, man, I'm not about to be stressing. With my eyes glued to the screen the whole night, man. Hearing that wind hitting the walls and shit. And hear some ooh, start looking out. You know, you peeking out the window. Is that? It's supposed to sound like a train, don't it? What do they say it's supposed to sound like? <laughs> Instead, it'd be better to be in the scriptures or loving your family or your acum or your wife, you know, family, or praying or just getting some rest or staying busy, man. You know, and watching, being alert. You gotta be alert, you know what I'm saying? Have a level of alertness and preparation. And education, educating yourself will take away fear as well, all right? So, this is what, when all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth, marveleth, marveleth that the fear was nothing. See that man, scared for nothing, scary ass. You know, so. It says, such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast. And that is sevenfold more upon sinners, man. Whew. It's like the, the story of a sinner's exit out of this life is brutal compared to a, a man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh right? That's, um, what is Wisdom of Solomon, I think, two, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Um, the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Lord. It says death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. Yeah, this, but this woman over there, you going to? Well, shit, something could happen to her on her way out. They all evacuating. Anything could happen. They busy telling you, you going. If you stay, you're done. <laughs> well, if you leave, you're done. Shit, just have faith. They just don't know. It's up to the Lord. These th <laughs> these things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood, man. So there's a difference than being in the spirit of truth, in the spirit of how about Shimei was shy, and being in a calamity compared to two thirds or these heathens being in the same situation. The Lord gonna do them dirty. All right. So um. Let me keep reading this, man. All things that are on the earth, that are of the earth, shall turn to the earth again, right? And that which is, that keeps us humble, man. We think we, for, for eternity, and next thing you know, the body just returns to the grave, and we staring at the Lord and the Spirit. <laughs> Realizing we would we were just human until the Lord makes us something better. And that which is of the waters do it return into the sea just like a wave with a sea it's, 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 uh, it makes all this commotion then it subsides just like us we're here just like a flower blossoms you see it bloom and then it's gone all right the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river and who's the unjust all the, man look at that what's that north carolina that that city i think it's asherville something like that it's named that that's a slave owner You, you do the math on that. Look at Jacksonville. Look at Florida. All the unalivings and gang. Uh, what do they call that damn music? Drill music. Right? Look at all that, man. That's why these things are coming upon this place. The goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river. And shall vanish with the noise, with the destruction, the judgment day. 
like a great thunder in the rain. All right. Right, Psalms 9 and 9. Yahweh also will be a refuge for the oppressed. What's a refuge? A safe house. So we don't need no, even if he was out in the middle of the storm, someday we're going to have that level of faith. So we'll be in the, in the middle of a hurricane, walking up under the damn thing. Sheesh. But we'll have that type of faith, all right, someday. Right, uh, right now we're not set up to, to we're not supposed to be tempting the Lord, all right. But that's the level of faith we should have, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Imagine the level of faith they had to have to step in to see a fiery inferno with the heat, and they say step in there. <laughs> faith. And the Lord quenched that fire. Now, Psalms 9 and 9. Yahweh also will be a refuge, a safe house. Right? That's what everybody's looking for right now, a safe house. For the oppressed. A refuge in time of trouble. All right, this is a time of trouble. That's coming upon America. Babylon. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, right? How are you going to put your trust in God when you don't know who he is or who his son is? What is his name? What is his son's name if thou canst tell? And you don't know his character or his mysteries or the mind of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai or his plans, his will. He allowed us to know all these things. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, faith in thee, man. Faith in Yahweh. For thou, Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee, man. All right? So it's not a shameful thing to have faith. Some brothers didn't want to leave. You know? And it, um, the Most High is going to protect them if it's his will. He said he shall compass them as with a shield. All right? So I remember one storm, it came right over our house, a hurricane, and then it it was just a circle. I mean, it was thick. And then next thing you know, it just kind of separated right over our house. It was just like an empty circle on the on the um, the weather app. It was nothing there, just over our, our area. And everywhere the storm moved, that empty space stayed there. I showed it to my children, man. What did it do? In keep, increase their trust. Increase their, increase their faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. One brother down there in Tampa, I remember... It was a tree fell on his house, and uh, one hurricane, and it hurt. The the tree stopped, and didn't damage the house. I think too much. I probably telling the story messed up, but I remember, and that was a testimony of trust and faith. All right. So, even traveling, if you decide to evacuate, that don't mean you lack faith, man. Don't try to prove nothing. All right. Um, I remember one hurricane it was real bad man but we didn't even have to leave but we started, took advantage of the opportunity and drove back up to Philly um, and my, on my way to Philly I made a beeline and Spirit led me to see the elders in person I was like oh, New York Philly I was literally looking at the signs on the, on the express highway and I was like I'm going to New York and I pulled up to 45th or something. I forgot what it was called. And I ran to the elders. All right. Spirit led me right to him. I ain't had no jacket. It was cold. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. You can make it useful if you decide to evacuate. All right. Have a purpose. So either way, you're showing faith. You know, if you decide to leave, you're showing faith. You still got to have faith and travel. Uh, even if you decide to stay, you're still showing faith, you know. And having faith in your heart about Shimmy Shai, you can't go wrong. All right, so let me get one more. All right, Isaiah 41 and 13. For I, Yahweh, uh, yeah, real quick. 
For I, Yahweh, will hold thy right hand. See, the Lord will uphold you spiritually. All right? Keep you in, in the spirit of faith and confidence. And physically, he'll protect you with spiritual power. Saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. See, through the spirit, he's comforting us. Telling you to fear not, he will help you. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. See, we're helpless here, man. Look what they're doing with the insurance claims. Look what they're doing with FEMA. Allegedly. So there's... Look what the mayor said. If you stay, you done. <laughs> they out of here. And it's going to be the same way in any calamity, man. When it gets... Turned into a whole city of calamity, they're going to have that same attitude. They don't want to be put in jeopardy for their families. And they're speaking to you from their faith when in fear, pushing that spirit of fear on you. So people that's stuck and that has no, have no way out or that, that just decided to stay in, in faith, yeah, we pray that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh protects you and us. All right? But fear not, thou worm Jacob. And ye men of Israel, right? Because the men, you pray over your household. See, that's why a woman, you're supposed to have a man of the Lord. All right? And if you're a woman by yourself and you're in the truth or you believe and you watch the brothers, may the Lord, your how about your shall protect you as well and your children or your family. But you should have a man that prays over you. I will help thee, say if you're and thy redeemer. So the same one that's going to help us in these last days as well and redeem us back to the Father, the Holy One of Israel. All right. Right. She, she, act like she, she just got her little crystal ball somewhere and she like, hold up. I saw her. if you don't leave, you're going to die. <laughs> well, Psalm 68 and 20. He that is our power is the God of salvation. Especially in times like this. To show his power and how he can save you. Come on, man. You pray to him and you and his truth. Most high prayers are like, yeah, let me see what I'm going to do. Get him out of this situation. I got him. I'm going to do something special for him and for his family. He that is our power is the God of salvation. Think about that. Being saved. All right? Safety. And unto Yahweh, the Lord belongeth unto unto Yahweh. Uh, the Lord, or unto the Lord Yahweh, belongeth the issues from death. All right, belongeth the issues from death. So, why? Because of this. It says here. <clears throat> Psalms 90 and 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. All right, matter of fact, I need this precept for another lesson I want to do later. Yahweh Ratazah. All right, Psalms 90 and 9. Right, so we spend our years here as a tale that's told, man. Okay. So in that story, he can write it how he wants. He's the author. The great tempest comes to destroy the land like a monstrous, oh no, you know. The dragon, Edom, the monster of the sea, <laughs> comes out <laughs> to destroy the land. And the Lord can rewrite that story or have it written to where a hero's story of salvation. He's the author of our salvation. The God of salvation. That's who we trust in. All right. So, uh, all right. And knowing all of this, we know that the Lord did not give us that spirit of fear. It's this place. It's these people, man. It's the system that's pushing that spirit of anxiety and fear, man. All right. All over the internet, dude, fucking meteorologists. You're supposed to have, you're supposed to be the most stern person on the damn internet right now in the time of crisis. And you crying. I'm sure you can look it up. Type in meteorologist crying at the damn storm. You're supposed to be stern and uh, stoic. Show some a level of stoicism in this situation. 
just like a police officer or something, and he on the screen crying for the whole world to see. And the damn storm went from a five and is going down to a four and a three. But he up there crying because it reached a five. He need a different uh, job. All right. Second Timothy 1 and 7 For Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear So if you got that spirit of fear in you Not saying um, Not saying uh, Evacuating is fear But I'm talking about If you decided to stay And you're scared That didn't come from the most high That came from you Your own thoughts as I read earlier Right Which every human conjures up somehow think about death and bad things happening that's the negative of the flesh but or it came from somebody that influenced you to think that way all right and the internet is the best way to influence and stoke that uh fear that's in people second timothy is one and seven for yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear but a power. See, the Lord gonna show his power, man. And his power in prayer. And of love, all right, the brotherhood. Okay, being in his truth. And of a sound mind. Waiting on the Lord. All right, knowing your purpose. Executing your purpose. Not thinking in envy. Not thinking in negativity. Not thinking in doubt or fear. But just doing, just thinking the way he tell you to think, man. He said, be still. Let me get that real quick. All right, this is what the Spirit is saying to you if you if you understand the Spirit. If you deal with, if Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is dealing with you, this is what should be wrestling against your flesh right now and comforting you. Psalms 46 and 10. Be still, right? Sound mind. Be still. Not a wavering ocean all over the place, like I was telling you. Right? Erratic. Control your emotions. Emotions are energy in motion. Like the waves of the sea. Control it. Steady it out like a ship. Remember, this vessel is the ship. The spirit can harness the mind like a horse. Or like a vessel. Even the tongue. Like a vessel of a ship, right? The helm, the vessel of a ship. It can lead you into destruction or it can lead you to your destination. Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know. Just trust and know that Yahweh is the power. And unto him belongeth what? The issues of death. Not to that mare. She don't know what the hell. She can warn you. But if you can't can't leave or you decided not to leave and trust Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Now if they trusting in uh Jebus, Allah, or some Krishna and Elam deity or something, or if they pagans and Gothics, then this message ain't for you. But if you trust in Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's saying this to you Be still and know that I am Yahweh. All right, let patience have a perfect work that you may be entire. Wanting nothing, man. And know that Yahweh is the power. Not Esau. They say cloud seeding and all this. And they stare in the storm. And just know that the Most High is the power. Not Esau. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Alright. He can be exalted by showing mercy and salvation to you as well. Okay. This is Psalms 34 and 7. I may need this one again too. Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of Yahweh encampeth around about them that fear him, man. And there's been many proofs of that. Um, examples, I would rather say. There's been many examples of the angels the angels of the Lord, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and camping around them that fear him, even around Jacob. Paul, Yahweh Shai himself. 
You can go on and on the whole list, man. So the Lord got his angels around you. The angel of Yahweh encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. Find out. That's why he said, be still and know. Like, go through it so you can see that the Lord is good, man. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. See that? Blessed is the man that had faith in him. Oh, fear Yahweh, ye, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him, man. All right? So, trusting in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you can never go wrong. Even if you decided to evacuate, you're still trusting in the Lord to, to get you the gas where you need to go. I mean, that, that gas will get you where you need to go. No breakdowns that your damn heart won't stop with some dumb shit. You just don't know, man. So, we pray to the Lord in every sense of every day, everything. All right. So whether you left or decided to stay, this message is for you dealing with faith. All right. And don't let this these people steer your boat and have you trembling in fear. All right. Whatever you decide to do, move in the spirit of stoicism and faith and leadership and confidence and examples. Not like that damn meteorologist crying on the screen and shit. Can you imagine if I started crying right now because of a goddamn storm on the screen right now? How many uh, feathers that were ruffled and how nervous people, some people that follow this channel would be? <laughs> Bro, you got to have a level of stern. Imagine if your dad at home was just scared and fucking crying and shit when you was, when you was little. All right? So... I'm going to get one more. Let me get Jeremiah 17 and 5. Right. Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus saith Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. See, you can't trust these damn devils. And make it flesh his arm. All right, make uh, people your strength. Trusting what the government say all, every damn time, they they can could also lead you straight into the damn fire. Look at remember Hawaii. Look at North Carolina. Look at Bill Hates owning part of portions of Tampa, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Thus say if Yahweh, curse be the man that trusteth a man and make a flesh his arm. Right, man, trusting them and they all scared. They want you to be scared too. Imagine them talking to Moses like that. Imagine um, if Hezekiah would have believed Sennacherib when he told he told them to not trust in Yahweh. Yahweh made a way and delivered Hezekiah from Sennacherib. The Assyrians. Thus if Yahweh cursed be the man that trusteth a man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from Yahweh. That's right. You can't trust these people, man. They they degenerates and bugged out. You know, even that mayor, she's bugged out. You can't trust you you're gonna you're done. <laughs> you don't know that, man. They don't know that for sure. They, they, she, she, what she should have should have said was, "There's a possibility that this could happen." You know, if you do stay, hopefully your faith is intact with with God, with Yahweh specifically. But she's not going to say that because she don't know the Most High. All right, and not a true leader. Whatever. There's a lot I can say about that, but I'll leave that there. The point of this is faith. Jeremiah 17 and 6. For he shall be like a heath in the desert. Yeah, you're going to be like that dry shrub way in the desert that don't get no water. The Lord ain't going to comfort you or even deal with you. If you're trusting in these church folks, uh, politicians, Democratic, Republican, American, all that, they're trusting in the government. The Lord said he's going to leave you out there in the dry desert, just like a little tiny ass patch of grass in the desert that doesn't get any rain 
that isn't fruitful, right, has no purpose, is not going to be delivered. They're going to leave you, uh, leave you out there. All right, for he shall be as a heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh. Just like that little ass dry patch of grass out there, way into the desert, and then you got other patches of grass where it gets watered and um, horses can come up and eat from it out in the Arabian desert but some patches of grass they're so dry because no rain reaches it alright just like no good will come to these people that have turned their back on the Lord alright so they can't expect they, they, they shouldn't and wouldn't expect deliverance from Yahweh they may but they uh, they're not asking um, Yahweh they're asking some idol or, or they're just atheists and they're not even thinking about it at all they're just moving in haste or staying staying because of pride you know I was my, I'm from here I'm never leaving uh, wrong answer you, I'd rather hear you say hey I know Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai I'd be like oh yeah you good man because even if you need to evacuate, I believe the spirit will move you to. That's what I'm saying. All right. It says what? These people shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, man. The destroyed places. The dry, uncomforted uh, places in this wilderness, man. And in a salt land... And not inhabited, so they're gonna get destroyed ultimately. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahweh. Blessed for trusting in the Most High, man. And whose hope Yahweh is. All right. So with that, I'm gonna say, uh, don't believe the hype. They pushing her message all around, all over the internet, man. Putting people in fear, yo. Yeah, if you're on the coast, if you're right by the storm surge or evacuation areas, you know, I would leave. I'm just saying, me personally, I wouldn't sit there trying to prove nothing. But it's at 15 foot high, 10 foot high. But if I was just stuck in it, I would have faith. If I, if I had to leave, I would have faith. So, either one, man. But if you decide to stay, this is for you. Don't believe this damn whatever never seen her before she popped up out of nowhere but you are going to die she don't know that all right have faith and you about to die we will uh you know see you on the on the flip side of this coin called uh hurricane milton and there's more to come they got like another one and then another one in november 2nd i think around that time so it's a lot happening in the world all right, but the Lord spoke of this. Let me get that real quick. End it with this one. So, like, give me a second. Let me get it. This is Luke twenty one and twenty five, and there shall be signs in the sun. We, this coronal mass ejections happening. Damn asteroid going by. I want to do a lesson on that later. And it just caused a major blast from the sun. Um, you got that, that moon out there that you can't see lingering. It's an you know, asteroid. You got the comet. You got planets aligned. You got so much happening this month. And you expect nothing to be affected upon the earth. When the Most High uses the... Uh, sun moon and the stars to affect and engineer what happens down here in the troposphere all right the tropics the dust the air the wind the heat the hot the cold the storms the north pole whatever all that is manipulated by the sun moon and the stars all right who controls that you how about shot luke 21 and 25 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars all right i think you had like a super moon last week causing higher tides and upon the earth 
distress of nations and perplexity. That's what's on this earth, man. They talking about wars and rumors of wars and distress of nations and perplexity, man. This is this is a distress call right now. Hurricane Milton. All right. Uh, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, roaring. I mean, it's going to be chaotic on this damn earth. And that's what we're witnessing, man. So with that, we're praying for Yahweh Bashim Shai to deliver us and show his power, man. This is a perfect time for the Lord to show his power and mercy and uh, his power of salvation in the sight of these damn doubters. All right, so with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.